Topics 2.2, techniques of differentiation. Now we are in upper level if comparing with previous week. So today we don't need to differentiate using the limits definition. Today we can differentiate or derivate using the new power rule. Let me show you one example. Suppose that we have f in x equals to 4x2. Today you don't need to apply the, the limit definition of the derivative, but I am using only to show you that the result will be exactly the same. So in this case, we have 4 times x plus delta x squared minus 4x2 divided by delta x. What is that? This will be equals to 4 times x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus minus 4x2 minus 4x2 correct so let's check what is happening here 4x squared plus a x delta x plus delta x squared minus 4x2 divided by delta x. Limit, what we are looking for, when delta x towards zero. After simplifying, we can cancel 4x2, 4x2. Now we have delta x, delta x, so we can write a x plus delta x divided by delta x times delta x. So we factor, cancel, cancel. Our final result will be a x, a x. Today, we don't need to perform all these operations. Today, we can write directly the power rule. Or the constant times the exponent n, 2 times x, 2 minus 1, which is equal to a x. So, from today, you can solve the derivative directly by applying power rule. There are other rules. So, so, when working with power rule, there are two more rules which we will demonstrate in chapter three. The first one for working with exponential function. So, the derivative with respect to the x of e to the x will be e to the x. Now, we will use this property directly. In chapter 3, we will demonstrate. And the derivative of the logarithmic function, natural logarithm, will be 1 over x. So now, let's see some, some examples. Example 64 from the homework. Find the derivative of this function using the power rule. Remember, the power rule says x to the n power, the derivative, which can be represented by this way, is equal to n times x to n minus 1. So the solution of that equation, the derivative of that equation, will be 2x minus 5 directly. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 10, which is a constant, is 0. And x2 becomes 2x. Topic 2.3.
root and quotient rules of differentiation. On the notebook, you have the, the demonstration of these two rules. I recommend that you take a look and try to do by yourself, follow the directions of the notebook. And now let's see a quick view of these two rules. The probe rule says that the derivative of the probe of two functions will be equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. And now for the quotient, will be d dx of f in x divided by dx will be the derivative of the first denominator functions f in x times g x minus the derivative of g x times f in x divided by the denominator function g x squared. Sometimes in order to remember in order to remember this formula we use some funny method. So e ho ho e ho ho he ho ho e ho ho now let's see some examples let's see one example using the product rule so given the function y equals to x squared plus 3 times x minus 5 find the derivative of the product of these two binomials we will consider that the first one is f in x the second one is the second function g in x the product rule says that dy dx will be equal to f in x times the derivative of g in x dx plus gx times the derivative of the function in x fx with respect to the x so we perform this operation we can write x2 plus 3 no, fx as it is times the derivative of x is 1 the derivative of 5 is 0 plus now gx as it is x minus 5 times the derivative of fx which is 2x the derivative of 3 is 0 now perform the multiplication x squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2x2 minus 10x resulting that our final final expression will be 3x2 minus 10x plus 3 we have to correct here 3 typographical mistake now let's solve one example using quotient rule let's suppose that we have 
the following division using the same elements we used before x2 plus 3 divided by x minus 5 and we want to find it, the derivative of this expression this division we will consider that on numerator we have f in x and on the denominator g in x as previously was explained the derivative of f in x divided by g in x with respect to the x will be the derivative with respect to the x of fx times g in x minus the derivative with respect to the x of g in x times f in x all of them divided by g in x squared as i explained it before there is there is a funny method to remember this equation so ho he minus he ho he he no it depends of the order that you use you can you can say he ho ho he ho ho so a combination of the derivative times the function minus the second function etc 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 now let's solve each the first one will be 2x the derivative of 3 is 0 times gx x minus 5 minus now the derivative of x minus 5 will be 1 times x2 plus 3 all of them divided by x minus 5 square let's perform the multiplication 2x square minus 10x minus x2 minus 3 divided by x minus 5 square which is equal to x square minus 10x minus 3 divided by x minus 5 square this is our final result let's solve one example from the homework let's let's answer to the question find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the given function at the indicated point this is the given function and let's solve for example at x equals to 1 as you know we are looking for in 1 should be some tangent line approximately this one the equation of this line will be y equals to mx b this is the slope uh, the slope is the derivative of the function dy dx in such case at x equals to 1 x is the variable y the function and b the y intercept 
So let's solve this. First of all, the derivative of the function dy dx is equal to minus 3x squared plus 2x. Add something wrong. Add x equals to 1. We get minus 3 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1. Final result will be 3 plus minus 3 plus 2 equals to minus 1. So the slope of the line, slope m equals to minus 1. Now go back to this equation. I am I am marking it in red. This is the slope. We need the value of y and x in that point where we are looking for the tangent line. So in this equation, if we replace at x, e, we get y equals to minus 1 cube plus 1 square, which is equal to 0 minus 1 plus 1. So now we have the value of the point. This point is located in this point. This point is located in 1,0. 1,0. We can replace in this equation all this number. Y is 0 equals to the slope is minus 1 x is 1 plus b so 1 times 1 is minus 1 move to the other side b is equal to 1 now we can write the equation of the line y is equal to the slope minus 1 we don't need to write 1 minus x plus 1 this is the equation of the line we are looking for. Example 76. If the volume of production in a specific manufacturing factory is represented by the given function y equals to 0.5x cubed minus 24x plus 250, where x represent the hours after 8 a.m. We will work only with positive x. The question is, a. Calculate the volume of production and the rate of change at 8 a.m., so when x equals to 0, and at 4 p.m means when x will be a. And the second question, calculate when, at what time, the production is minimal. So x here represents the time. Let's see the graph. We have here the graph and we can get larger one. We are looking for minimal production. We are looking for this time, this x value, and this volume of production. Volume of production and here the time x 
this is what we are looking for in question B. In question A, we are looking for at zero hour at x equals to zero the rate of change, which is the derivative, which will be the slope of this line. And at A, somewhere here, somewhere here, we are looking for the rate of change, the slope of this tangent line. As you can see, it was negative at the beginning. <laughs> the people were working very slow. Uh, eight hours late, the rate of change was positive. Here, the slope is positive. Here, the slope is negative. Let's solve the question. Now, we know very well the graph. Let's solve the question. So, let's get the derivative of the function will be dy dx is equal to 3 times 0 0.5 times x squared minus 24 at x equals to 0 we get here x is 0 so minus 24 we know about that this is a negative slope the rate of change so the production rate is decreasing now let's see what happened at a no at 4 p.m when x equals to a if we replace here at x equals to a so we get in this case 3 times 0 0.5 times a squared minus 24 which will be 64 times 0 0.5 will be 32 times 3 will be 96 minus 24. Finally, we have 2 and 7. 72 is the rate of change. So, this is the volume of production per hours 72 units per hour is totally different to the rate of change at the beginning now the second question when the production is minimal we are looking for minimum here minimum if this is a minimum the slope of the tangent line here will be zero it's a horizontal line m equals to zero so the derivative of this function in this point in this point so dy dx in this point will be zero where the slope is zero we have the derivative we have 3 times 0 0.5 x2 minus 24 will be equals to zero resulting that x squared is equal to 24 divided by 3 times 0 0.5 so x2 equals to 16 
x equals to 4 4 hours is the time when the production will be minimal so now we can resume this exercise using small table uh, x equals to zero which represent a am the rate of production we calculated was minus 24 negative rate of production and when x equals to a it happens at 4 pm the rate of production was 70 if replacing the value of x in this original function, we get the volume of production. So you can use your calculator. When x equals to 0, 0, 0, 0, 250 units is the volume of production. When x equals to a, you will get 314 the rate of production is increasing these two numbers satisfy part 8 of the question um, part B it happens minimal production at x equals to 4 <coughs> this is 12 noon the rate of production here will be 0 there is not increment there is not decrement so minimal production but the volume of production will be 186 units so by this way we have full answer to this question